All right, Rank, we put a yeah. poll out on Twitter. We said, which fantasy running back is the most likely to break out this season? Four options. <laughs> Javante Williams, Damian Pierce, Travis Etienne, or Brees Hall. Yeah. Uh, it got close there for a minute, but Javante Williams winning out at 41%. Huge. Travis Etienne second at 29%, 20% of people saying Damian Pierce, and then the rookie Brees Hall coming in last at 9%. All Man. four valid options. Sure. But Twitter thinks that Javante Williams is poised for the biggest breakout season. Do you agree, know, knowing that there's a looming Melvin Gordon in Denver? Yeah, that is one of the things that's been the most difficult to kind of decipher because we've seen the hype around Javante Williams. Peter Schrager said recently that he believes that he's going to end up winning the rushing title. The biggest thing for me is this new coaching staff doesn't have a bias one way or the other. Mm. You know, this is a brand new situation. Nathaniel Hackett is in his first year as head coach of the Denver Broncos. But what I did is went back and looked at the usage last season when he was in Green Bay. Right. Where Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon were a near 50-50 split towards the end of the season. Both players went out there, got over 1,100 scrimmage yards, and I really do believe that that's going to be a situation here again where both of these guys have the ability to get 1,100 plus scrimmage yards. They're both going to be very active. And I was drafting Javante Williams in the third round. Wow. And so I, I feel comfortable with that. I'm drafting him as an RB2. And if my RB2 is getting me 1,200 yards, you know, getting close to double digit touchdowns, I'm very happy with that. Right. Melvin Gordon is a great option as well. Okay. So, so either of those guys, but out of the four in the poll, Javante Williams, Damian Pierce, Travis Etienne or Brees Hall, would you have picked Javante Williams as the breakout? I would stud? have. I would have taken him. Like if we were doing the draft right now, and I was putting together my draft board, it would have been very similar to the way that those, the polling, ended up. Yeah. Like that would have been my four. I would have been, or that's the way I would have ranked them. I would have gone Javante, Travis Etienne, then I would have gone Damian Pierce, who I still like a lot, but right. he's getting overvalued. And Brees Hall, who Brees Hall I ended up taking in the fourth round in my okay. league of record, although I was at the button. So uh -huh. I, was, I took Kyle Pitts and him. Oh, amazing. He was my, he was my RB2. Like, again, you got to know the way your league drafts, and I forget, like, oh, yeah, my league loves running backs. But I got Kyle Pitts, so I'm like, all okay, right, I love it. Cheating. We'll have another poll next week, so make sure you guys uh, head to Twitter and vote on the next one. Speaking of running back questions, though, we have some more at the position, and we got another video this time from Jose. Hey guys, Jose from LA here. I have a question for week one. Am I gonna go with David Montgomery or Elijah Mitchell? I'm a Niners fan, so that's where my heart lies, but at home, maybe Montgomery's a better play. Let me know, thanks. This question was made yeah. for you, out of Yeah, rank. what is he doing? David Montgomery <laughs> is gonna end up running. I mean, they're gonna run the football. I mean, the they're gonna have Niners to. are a very good football team. Right. And their defense is very stout and everything like that. But I'm a really I'm a big fan of what Luke Getze is going to be doing there in Chicago. And as much as everybody wants to malign the offensive line, they went out there and, and revamped it. You know, they have two new starting tackles. Lucas Patrick is expected to play this week. We saw them go out there and and, you know, bring in a new coaching staff to help fix this. They're bringing in the Shanahan zone running scheme like there's a lot of things a lot of positives with the bears so if you listen to the national media they'll they'll lead you to believe that this is the worst organization in the nfl but if you actually follow ball especially chicago football you'll know that this team is poised to make a playoff run this year i feel like this is you talking specifically to dan hansis but i like it all right so david Whatever. montgomery for week one over elijah mitchell another question that we got uh, for some running backs. This one coming from Christopher. He says, should I start Cam Akers on Thursday night, the kickoff of the season, or yeah. do I roll the dice with A.J. Dillon on Sunday? It's a flex spot and a 12-team league half-point PPR. You know what? I don't like the fact that this is I, – I don't know. These kind of questions always are daunting because both of those guys are great starters, and you're either drafting all running backs to where your receivers are not good – or something is happening because A.J. Dillon is a starter for most people because, yep. again, the Green Bay Packers don't have a lot of talent offensively outside of Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, 
and A.J. Dillon. So if I get an opportunity to get him in the game, I'm going to do that, especially, you know, going up against this Vikings team that's going to be a little suspect defensively. I expect Aaron Jones to get a lot of targets, but when they get near the goal line, they're going to be turning towards A.J. Dillon. And mm -hmm. similarly, Cam Akers is out there going up against the Buffalo Bills, a team that allowed a lot of rushing touchdowns last season in a kickoff game with a team that loves to run the football. So this, I honestly, I want to see the rest of the roster. So you've got, I want to know who the two other running backs are that you're starting over them. Because if this is for a flex spot, I don't know. I mean, I guess if I'm picking one, I don't know. I don't like this situation. I I'd guess, pick AJ Dillon. Yeah, I guess I would too. Plus, because we, we don't quite know what the situation is on the health of Cam Akers. Man, and that, you know what? That's an interesting thing too, because Cam Akers is now what? It's been like 15 months. It's been a while. Right. Since he tore his Achilles. When we talk about James Robinson, like he tore his in December mm -hmm. and people are afraid of Travis Etienne. Like, oh, you know, James Robinson. I'm like, yeah, but that was like four weeks. It feels, you know, it feels like it was yesterday. Like it wasn't that long ago. So I don't know. The Achilles guys, I don't know. They always concern me. Like Marlon, what's, do, what's Marlon Mack doing? He got released by Houston. Right. Like Achilles is a devastating injury and nobody seems to care. Christian McCaffrey. Gets banged up. They kind of shut him down last year in a lost season. Nobody wants him. <laughs> but here come the guys with all these. Oh, I'm going to draft the guy with the bus. I don't know. I don't know if they didn't. They, they did. They didn't do well in biology or science. They didn't take college courses on on on. Uh, I don't even know the word I would use. Physicality. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. He's saying Achilles to is start. A, it's a bad injury to come. He's come saying up to back start AJ Dillon AJ over Dillon. Cam Akers in the flex spot. Um, Rank. We know that every single year, late round draft steals are always a thing. It's like yeah. you get the late round guys, and they're the ones who actually get you a fantasy championship. Last year, we had a number of guys. Let's take a look at some of the guys who got it done and where they were drafted. Ooh. The ADP does not mean everything. Starting with the quarterbacks, Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford, and Jalen Hurts. All of those guys taken in the seventh round or later, but finishing within the top nine at their position. The running backs, these guys were a steal. Both James Conner and Leonard Fournette taken in the eighth round, but finished as the RB5 and RB6. We saw the same thing happening with these stud wide receivers, Jamar Chase and Hunter oh. Renfro and Debo Samuels. I mean, you literally cannot go wrong with any of these guys. I love amazing. that Hunter Renfro went undrafted and then finished as a wide receiver 10. I still like him. For, for Vegas. Oh, Obviously, same. production goes down with Devontae Adams there, but Hunter Renfro. And then the tight end spot, this is the most confusing position, I think, for all of us to draft around. We had Dalton Schultz go undrafted, and then, as you mentioned earlier, he finished well, as the tight end three. Everybody was into Blake Jarwin. We were into Blake Jarwin. That was a big um, thing. And then finishing that out with Zach Ertz. He was joining a new team in Arizona. We didn't know what that was going to look like, but he finished as the tight end number five. So all of this is to say that there there are late round steals sure. that are going to help you win your what fantasy league happens every single year. Who is going to be that guy for you this season in 2022? For me, I really love Nico Collins because one of my, one of the things that I love to do in these drafts, when you get past your established stars and you're starting to just fill out your roster, rookie running backs, mm -hmm. like there is going to be a rookie running back that finishes in the top 15 this season. There just is. And there is going to be a second year wide receiver who is going to break out. Now, it feels kind of funny to sit here and talk so much about the Houston Texans because there really are a lot of valuable fantasy pieces here. You think about Damian Pierce. We haven't even mentioned Brandon Cooks, who's mm -hmm. one of the most consistent players in the NFL. And then you've got Nico Collins, who last year, as you see, was tied for the team lead with six end zone targets. I honestly believe that with Houston probably playing in a deficit in a lot of these games, they're going to have to throw the football. And I think both Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins can be very valuable for you. Yep. But Collins is the guy who's going super late in drafts. Ooh, I like it. Do you have one? But I, I have one. You're going to laugh, though. I'm not going to laugh. Because I've been talking about Why would I laugh? All, all preseason, and it could seem like a homer as pick. As long as it's not Isaiah Pacheco, then I'm cool. It's Isaiah Pacheco. Is Stop. It? He's making jokes. He's making jokes. He knows who I love. It is Isaiah Pacheco. I got the incredible opportunity to go back home to Kansas City this amazing. summer. You crushed it, by the Thank way. Thank you. That was really good. Um, and I did the preseason games for KC. 
and it was like a little homecoming moment. But the best part of it was being able to go to training camp and yeah. see the team, you know, not in a game setting and really get to talk with the coaching staff and see who they're excited about. And it was undeniably everyone's excitement for this offense was around Isaiah Pacheco. I absolutely love the fact that this guy is a late round draft deal. You don't have to pay up or spend big to grab him on your fantasy squad. I'm not saying you need to go out there and start him week one, but Clyde Edwards Alaire has not been oh, super boy. consistent for us at the running back spot. Oh, he struggled goodness. with injury yes. and it's horrible. I think he's incredibly talented. Yes. But the thing that's so fun about Isaiah Pacheco is he's a pass catching back. Love it. He's incredibly strong. He's the fastest player on their team. They like flat out said they're like, he is one of the he's fastest faster than, guys. He's faster than Tyreek Hill. Oh, wait, you traded him. Do you want to know a fun fact? Isaiah Pacheco is rocking number 10 this season. That's the best part. You don't give a rookie yeah, that number if you don't presume that he's going to be incredible. Could you imagine? Like the audacity. To the, audacity. It, the audacity. But I kind of love it. May I, may I throw in just one little, one little nugget? About Pacheco? Am I allowed to say nugget? I know that we, we ran into a, a lawyer concern a couple of years ago. <laughs> we were trying to do a show called Fantasy Nuggets. But here's my thing. Yeah. Tell me. Back me up here. He was Clyde edwards Elaire was compared favorably mm -hmm. to Brian Westbrook when he was coming into the draft. Yeah. If you look at Brian Westbrook's first two seasons in the NFL, <laughs> horrible. Underwhelming. And then he crushed it in his third season. Okay. I only bring this up because Clyde edwards Elaire is entering his third season. So I you think, think that he, I, both of these things can be true. Clyde okay. edwards alaire can I have an it, incredible season and Pacheco can be that guy for Kansas City as well. I feel like it's very difficult to be a running back for an Andy Reid offense. And I think that Isaiah Pacheco will make some some uh, YouTube plays Yeah, that we're like, we're making memes and GIFs off. Uh-huh. But I don't know if the consistency will be there. With you don't think the consistency is going to be there? I like him. He's a good player. You just don't know if they can. The thing is, Kansas City obviously is a pass heavy offense because you have Patrick Mahomes yeah. as a quarterback. No one is going to deny the fact or I don't think Kansas City is going to get away from that. However, everything we saw in the preseason is Kansas City straight up messing with us because yeah. the whole conversation in the national media has been, what is Kansas City going to look like without Tyreek Hill? Right. So the fact that in every single preseason game that Patrick Mahomes played in, he spread the ball to yeah. six or seven different guys nice. before he got into the end zone, including running backs. Yeah. Running backs have to get involved in the passing game more, and we need to run the ball a lot more because that's where we run into problems, right? Think about the horrible game that we had against the Bengals when yeah. we're trying to go and win to go to the Super Bowl. We don't run the football yeah. and that's where we get in trouble right we go up with this lead and then we blow the lead because we can't run the football and i think isaiah pacheco is a healthy answer to that question all right i'm sold okay i'm doing two drafts tonight well one of them i'm in with you so i'm not gonna be able to get isaiah pacheco no somebody's the gonna somebody's one, gonna just be rude snake. and steal him oh. i will not i will purposely not take if you do, I won't show up next I won't. week. Listen, I'm not going to do it. All right, fine. I promised you. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. <laughs> all right, those are our favorite late round draft steals. But coming up next, we are answering all of your questions about the wide receiver and tight end positions. We got a lot of questions. We have a lot of answers. Plus, we got some super spicy takes for week one. Let's just call it Don't At Me, Bro. You like that, right? Oh, ring? my God. That's good. All right, Don't At Me, Bro.